Brown is not here tonight. Uh, he had a conflict in appointments. I'm standing in, so I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, power on my camera. Did I do that? No. Well, my plugs are going off. Okay. And as it's here, communications. That's one of the biggest changes that's occurred both in residential and commercial. Panels are, uh, there's a, a myriad of panels. really love the Honeywell. Honeywell is robust in both the fact that the commercial and the residential panels be used almost interchangeably. A lot of the other ones can't. I'm moving this down a little bit. I feel like I'm too loud. Um, the, the reason is that the, the small to medium enterprises uh, have uh, pretty much high traffic as just one of the, some of the larger companies. And the Vista panel, which we're going to talk about in just a second, uh, the communications are now used Wi-Fi. You can use uh, uh, voice over internet protocol, VoIP. You can use roll pots, which is plain old telephone systems, and you can use cellular radios. And it doesn't matter which one is secondary. And what I mean by that is if if you have a business and your, your advisors or if you're working for an organization or you're the IT person in that organization, you can say, how are we backed up? I can buy this arms the system. What happens if power goes off? Well, the panels in seven amp hour batteries. We can actually run those batteries in series, two batteries in a panel. Um, and the radio can be put into the panel to create audio. And the power from the panel will be for a good six, seven hours. So technically, you don't ever have to worry about your phone line being cut or anything like that. We can also use wi We designed one today for a customer that did not want to use his radio as primary. He wanted to use his secondary. So even Honeywell has now recommended that Wi-Fi used as a secondary communication, as a primary communication too, for communicating back to the monitoring center and saying, hey, door number uh, you know, 22, back door warehouse is now open. They call the people you want to call, three people, whatever, bang. You said that nobody should be in you know, send the police, and they're there in a second. And there's other ways of verifying that too, because the monitoring companies can now use cameras to see if they are, or you can use that. I'm just going to give you something about the um, the communications aspect is very important because we're going to talk about the Vista 20, uh, which is one of the most commonly used panels, and the Vista 21 IP panel. Um, both of those. Those panels, can radio, Wi-Fi, you know, Cincinnati, plain old phone line. Or, like I said, the radio's for it. It's just, everything has totally changed. Um, the, the, we'll walk into that. Education was the first one on here. Let's dig into this stuff. Let's see. The second one was, The of our existing clients now use the capabilities of what's called Total Connect, um, which is a great issue to put all of controls through one app on your phone, where you can turn your thermostats up and down, you can open doors, you can open up Z-Wave blocks, arm and disarm systems, <coughs> arm and arm it to a way mode, which arms everything in the whole house. You can set it to a stay mode, which turns off all the motion detectors and leaves your doors armed. So you can walk around your whole building. Uh, you can walk around your entire uh, plant. I know that where Jan was from, usually on Saturdays, to be in the building a lot of times, and but on it, the doors armed, but they wanted total access to the entire building. And that was a big feature, still is. Uh, the environmental controls. Let's see, talk about it. The, we have features now that are used 
let's say it this way, more, more can intrude into a business or a home, and let's just talk about business or a home either, but then the people more than a person can ever take. Heat can more, fire can steal more, smoke can steal more, carbon monoxide can steal more. Have a bad sap sump pump, you know? Have a broken pipe in your boiler room in your business. Um, we have what's called a water bug. In uh, roofs in corporations where they are not allowed to step into that area where all of their air handlers are up there opening the louvers in the building to cool the buildings down, you know, and letting friends like this, building that like fresh air, really aware. Three people are usually here Monday through Friday from probably about seven until about seven. And then they begin to shut down because they're not moving anywhere near as much carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. And some of our actually look at how many cars credentialed at the doors. They know, you know, we don't have that many people in. It's Labor Day Monday. It's set up in a day. Up in air through this building 24 hours because nobody's in here. The building's basically closed. So there's water bugs. We put water bugs in, in, um, in some of the big rooms that have the air handlers on the roof simply because you get electrocuted if there's water on the floor, upstairs. If there's a problem with a duct bolt, an industrial duct bolt, and what a duct bolt is, and I'll, we're talking about environmental things. All the air conditioning and all the air moving in this building from fire. Environmental things that are I don't know if we'll talk about those mentally. There's a lot that is now has nothing to do with burglars. It's got a lot to do with just protecting the assets of the building, what can intrude in the building. Okay. <coughs> Stop me if there's any questions. Okay. Yeah, this is important. Not door protection. Never. We have um, motion detection now that can be hardwired. Um, it can be placed in a particular building where nobody's supposed to be, but still outside temperature wise. Out in the weather areas. Uh, let's put it this way we installed a system that's not in here. But it's called a tattletail. A tattletail so is totally wired. The base is about the size of a Toaster oven, maybe a little bit bigger. Absolutely incredible equipment. There's no wire except you have to plug it in. It's got its own high, uh, high speed radio inside. About 20 times per cell phone. Uh, that link to it can go 2,000 from the tower. Uh, motion detectors go out probably 100 feet. The boat that controls it is over 100 feet. Uh, so in other words, I could, we did it, we did just in a, uh, all over Ohio. I can go 2,000 feet to the right to the left, 2,000 feet up, 2,000 feet down, 2,000 feet forward, 2,000 feet back, 5,280 feet in a mile. We can cover almost a mile it's like this. It's hundreds of times with Messer. Because everything in this building, they you want the perimeter, Detect. So they don't want anybody to be able to come in here with anything. Got me? So the motion detectors are put in. Unit itself has a motion detector on it. And it's got a side of it. Rather, there's nothing other than a vibration sensor, so you can't steal it. You can't pick it up and run off with it. Um, and they're employed all over the uh, you know, downtown. I mean, my God, I can't even tell. Uh, UK. You see Children's Hospital, all the addition to Christ. Uh, yeah, the new addition to Jewish, uh, new Kenwood area, new new terms, was all protected by, by town. Uh, we caught a guy in Ashland, Kentucky, who won a backhoe. He didn't know what was on there. He slid it on, put it on the back trailer, the tattletale went off, 
he tried to go across the bridge, I believe that's over to Aberdeen, Ohio. Before Aberdeen, they had like covered on bullets. Wow. Was he was trapped on the bridge. <laughs> and then he tried to get off, and then he tried, when he tried to get on the Aberdeen side, he tried to get his, and they were like, nah, not yours. And the attack pulled the, uh, the mag super strong magnets on the rattler, pulled it off and said, is this yours? And he said, I don't have it. <laughs> and they got it. I got a question. Yes. <clears throat> I was at Dunn's and the time uh, buckled into the check and he said, Dungle Jim and something, said that uh, they don't have a sensor to detect that there's paper in it. Would you be able to do that? In the what? The, where they pay the checks. At the counter? No. Not that I'm aware of. No. Okay, there was also a warehouse somewhere in the United States. A deer in the window and got into the data center. Would uh, this tattletale be able to use a vision of how an animal is coming for the No, a tattletale is not a camera. A tattletale is an intrusion system for water, for fiber, okay. you know, motion. For heat, for fire. How about what? Monk, the her face is you mentioned. She said uh, motion, fire, etc. So, what about that? Uh, the dead sound. Vibration. Sound? No, not currently. They're working on that. Okay. No, it does not. Uh, but the what? You know, facial recognition is, is, is a, a property of cameras. Camera, actual camera software it has nothing to do with the camera itself. It's the management system of the camera. Uh, but to answer her question, the, you don't even need facial recognition for a deer, which is a good question. Uh, the deer outside in Messer had a deer when they were on Tennessee Avenue over here, and deer come to the fence and running all the way out. We have outdoor motions place, they're not tattletale. Because we use hard wire motions and everything they had was hard wire. Simply because they didn't need it for their own building. It was finished. Tattle tales are used for construction. I want you to, to know that. Almost, almost none of my clients use them for a permanent system, even though they can be. Because they're they're portable. I can they can tell me I'm gonna build 38, 20, 36, 25, and go up, we're gonna clear the land, and we're gonna start and we're going in. Uh, uh, you know, equipment, steel girders, we're in roofing equipment, we're going to bring lighting equipment, we're going to start leaving our backhoes, and, and we're going to start leaving out, uh, um, you know, whatever, everything, earth movers, and we can protect all of that. We still always recommend they put a fence around the property, but uh, the tattletale, uh, you know, 2,000 feet, you can protect a lot of areas, let's just create up. But what messages is what we did for them. But when it was done, we unplug it, we take it, we put it into the next location, you can change the location. We could say now it's at the University of, of, of Kentucky. They were doing like six doors in part of the medical center. The UK changed the address, changed the call list because the guys in Cincinnati are gonna get called move for Lexington. So it's totally, totally and it takes as long as it takes to unplug it. Together and what other feature about it that's nice, and we'll get back to this. The devices that are programmed to it only work with it. Like I can't walk up, you know, and we've had we've had contractors try, you know, my tools are all in this big box. I lock them up, as it says, I protect your stuff and buy stuff, so we're all secured. You know, the guy comes back, tries to take it off the wall when it's disarmed during the daytime. And they, you know, they got all kinds of tools in the world. They can get the, the table and then they think, okay, I can use this, you know, with my brother's thing or whatever. They don't know what you're doing. It doesn't work with anything except that one particular. Now, it can be changed. You can program it to different ones. But if we program it to that, it's only going to work for that until we change it. I'm going to give you an idea. All that's done through the LTE radio that's inside. And it is totally uh, discernible. We can tell whether it's a fourth floor elevator shaft or the third floor, you know, area. We can, we can, it's all can be delineated. Are these devices uh, voice enabled? The voice enabled? 
kind of uh, understand a speech like that. Do uh, they work with with the uh, things like Alexa and, and Google Voice? No, they're proprietary to Tablet. His question actually: If they can be voice activated? No. There's no voice activation at all. There's a remote that comes with them. I can't get away from two. So if you're coming in a gate on something as big as this side of Brooklyn, well, before you turn it in, you can turn it off so you can come in. Or it's going to go off and they're going to be standing there, the cops will be standing there looking at you, wondering what you're doing there. So they're going to build a huge project, have their own remotes. You're looking at uh, solutions where some of the security systems in data centers to, to keep This is what I'm jumping here, but, in, in, but I have to ask a question. Is there anyone in this room besides myself who's with this? Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you're on the tape. So, um, you know, yeah. <laughs> what happens, happens. And, and Excellent. Let me, can you say what you were concerned about it, dovetail into what he was saying? Yeah, definitely. Because um, there's physical security. And security in and of itself, by itself, is one thing, okay? We all know that Fifth Third Bank, the year we have physical security where people die. Terrible, awful, and, and we pray it never happens again, and we've done things to circumnavigate that. How clients concern, as, as awful as this sound, is not so much physical security in and of itself as it is the physical security that protects their data. That's an okay. entirely different area. And, uh, so to your point, I think your question is, is very valid and very relevant. I, mean, it's, it, I have a tough time answering. I, I have to answer client information security assessments and questionnaires and do them. Security, if we if would call it security, if you for people that test for them, right. you, 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 you are absolutely wrong, it's not right. Uh, physical security, first, it's part of physical security to prevent calling the heat. But it's also protects data, it's one of the numerous layers of security. So uh, I, just, I just want to correct what you said, because uh, uh, I don't want anybody who is not in the to be confused. Mm -hmm. We don't do any cyber or anything like that. I think with IT department to say the number one thing I that, well that should say not number one. One of the highest protect server okay. and the equipment okay. and all of the the, the, the blades, every, everything that comes, my lines of demarcation coming in, not anything through it. That's not our expertise, okay. but I can guarantee you we can protect your server, and we've done that how many times? Uh, we have one of the one of the uh, in this area and their server room is like a, a safe uh a right above is the largest logistics company and their server not only security like we're talking about here with door contacts and, and things of that nature but access control who can come they can come why they can come when they went when they left and if we pull the fire panel and tell them how to build it there's a must that says that they swipe their card sometime today but walter is still in the building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got me? Legally? Okay. Or unlegally? As far as we know, <laughs> as far as, now again, the mustard, let me answer your question. But a mustard report always lets people know that people came in through door 12, came in through the you know, went out and then when came back after a meeting, the alarm is still holding for them. We know that Walter swiped his card and came in at 3.30, presented his card. Well, yeah. somebody just was using his card, but you know yeah. whose card was mm -hmm. Where I swiped it? Well, the Aurora software for Keith and some of the Honeywell, uh, actually you have a picture that pops up with that card. So it would not look like Walter? No. What I'm saying is, depending on the systems now, and I want to get into access control a little later. This is Procter & Gamble. Gamble lobby works. Well, Procter & Gamble does. So if a guard is sitting there, and you out at Clinton Hills Technical, and you present that card, and the gate comes up, 
the guard was in, I think the guy just came up on my, on my, so he got that far. And, and stop them. They'll, they'll stop them right now and say, hey, you do not match the picture I have in my access control software for the card you just presented. Exactly. Now, everybody doesn't need all the companies aren't that big. You don't have people standing there with cages going up and down and things like that. But the credentialing can be, be, be that robust. Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't do cyber, meaning uh, getting through fire in, you know, uh, closing ports behind it, figuring out what you're trying to do and, and who's and all that. That's not our expertise. It's not our, but we are brought in. Uh, they believe that somebody has keys and been trying to get in out of the building, and then they told him five times that he's been let go, and he's still trying to get in the buildings, and the cameras are seeing him. We can turn the car off. Of course, he's tried. We can tell him off. When he's tried it, and you can send a letter to him and say, try it again, you'll be arrested. Cool. In a matter of seconds, your IT department would say, hey, Bill's tried Labor Day to get in. <coughs> again. Both. And that's the Sarah Pitcher's in, uh, entry. I'm going to knock on the door. But we're controlling. I don't mind talking about any stuff. We, when we're talking about intrusion, one of the things that's good about intrusion is um, the, the Honeywell system that we're talking about just in this beginning pamphlet, which I need to midnight. This is that, um, you can swipe your card and turn the system on. We've got clients, a person that has all come into this building between 7.30 in the morning and 7.30 at night. I go and the card, which is more, it can be a little key bob, code you punch in. We have clients who say, I want them both. I want a code and I want a credential product, a card or a fob. Mm -hmm. so, this, so if you drop your card, it doesn't help you one bit because you got to know the code. And if somebody's doing something improper and tells his buddy, my code is there, they're not getting it. Got me? But what we can do is keep you, how could I describe it? Um, the first person who comes in that has the white code to this building, if we had done this building, at 7 o'clock in the morning, it kills the security system. So now the, the building stays unlocked 7 to 7. One second after 7 o'clock at night. And every elevator that has floors that are delineated as no longer can go to floor, you know, five, six, and seven without credentialing, bam, the elevator won't let you go to five, six, and seven. Got me? So all that stuff is now integrated, uh, which it never used to be. I hope I'm answering your questions about just the intrusion that should be tied into the whole system. <coughs> Now, most of the time, system and the access control system are made by the same vendor. But some of the larger vendors, they can accept other people's intrusion. We have a couple clients who had intrusion systems that we didn't. And most of them accepted, can be tied to it, and swipe the card, turn the intrusion system off as well. Okay? All right. I have a question. Hit me. <laughs> you were talking about and stuff like that. It's parts of the city, there's still lots of livestock around, so can you adjust the motion sensors that it's not just go off or cat or dog or deer that goes across the property? Is that cool? Where is this? The outside? Fox and Coyote. There are any, there, there are no magic outgoings or anything. Um, there aren't really any magic bullets to hang. Uh, some motion detectors can, they come with the ability to ignore small animals. 
I don't know that's going to default to a deep um, in an area where she called us out and said, I don't want anything in my backyard. I'm going to go off if it's in my backyard. If it's a, a squirrel, something maybe the size of a possum, or some, a raccoon, we have most protectors that will ignore anything under 90 pounds. <coughs> So most of the time, the default is, forget the little guys, get the big guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? And those can be placed in uh, those settings, which we do a ton of, because birds fly in warehouses all the time. Walter is not going to sit there for two hours out of a warehouse. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, and even though a bird is a little guy, when he flies right back, he's a buffalo. Yeah. Yeah. You got me? And that's why the good ones are sealed. Because if you get a tiger, he walks across the front of the buffalo. <laughs> so they have to be. All I'm trying to say, as I said earlier, if we can help in any way, just to make sure the difference is dollars. Seriously. You know, and I'm not here to knock anything, but a whole lot of commercials you see on television about the easiest thing to do is for you to put this in yourself. <laughs> you know, and then you and then only pay twelve dollars a year. <laughs> you try. I can't have got in our stores that that stuff yeah. the box after they tried to install it. <laughs> and the guy pulled his hair out trying to get the motion detector to stay on, I mean the door contact, and then to run back over to the panel and program and then to run back over here and put the motion up. And by the time he put the motion up, the contact's falling off the door and he's like, oh my God, what am I going to do? By the way, do you have a cat? And he says, oh yeah, I got a cat. Oh, yeah. Well, it doesn't work with a cat. Which is weird, because cats can leave a, a big signal this big. Dogs don't jump a thousand miles an hour. Cats do. Yeah. A cat can, and and our, I'm jumping around different elements. The uh, infrared motion is what a, what a motion detector is. It looks at heat in motion. Okay, so can. Go up the steps and then jump. Doesn't have to even get to the bottom of the steps. To the side of the rain. A big, huge infrared. Your motion detector is gone. If you don't have a motion detector, 30 pounds, 45 pounds, 90 pounds, or something like that, that's going to ignore an assumed size. Got me? Okay. That's good for um, for uh, uh, corporations because it's hard headed prospects we have determined the clients if they said oh i worked that and they let birds in all summer long and the thing's going off all the time and they finally say leonard nobody broke in i don't see anybody on my what's going on and i say well did you see any birds oh yeah there's six of them okay that's what it is so we put in your birds okay now again most systems are always going to defer to your safety so if you've got something that's 285 pounds, like a deer, you don't want to know he's in your or in your yard. There's some things that you just the yeah, outside the best way put a fence up, you know, and make it high enough to deter. The only the only thing that we recommend on top of that is that my phone is back there. I'll have a. a Walter pass it around. It, the, the, the codes are going to the point now where they want verification before they'll come out and test it. And so I have to be able to this way. First thing my client does is go to his cameras, hit the cop, hit the looks at his cameras and says, Dear, my backyard, don't send the cop. Got me? Or oh, they'll say, yes, I want you to send the cake and the daylights out of my wife's Corvette. <laughs> and then, you know, and we've had that. Where she got like your clothes kicked in. Yeah, and they're not. Simple foundational principle, uh, one of the foundational principles of security. Whatever can be its work must be cured. Uh, should be used for protection. 
Okay, all appears in the whole possible. So uh, in, 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 in this case, example of uh, solving uh, any, all these problems with red, dear jumps of whoever else is flying there, putting uh, physical protection uh, corresponding to potential threats, uh, will, will be successful in any potential No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. I guess what I wanted to do, and I'm hoping this brochure helps you, is that they're all married together. They used to be totally entities, totally, uh, they were not useful to each other. There was no way to integrate them. If you found somebody that could integrate them in, shock, how, some kind of way, ADT, which is a proprietary system, was able to, he could reward it, and he could do this with it, and do that with it, but it was nothing that they would came to ADT. They accepted it wasn't an approved product and their servicemen couldn't work on it so therefore it didn't exist. Now if you, you want to straight. But now other companies were like that too. Let me let me move on because I think we could more questions and it's all still right down the same alley. The next piece of paper is a Vista 20. It's probably the most used the most used um, Walter I am running you ragged. <laughs> Is probably the most channel there is. There's a Vista 20P, which I, I put this in here. It's got all the specs on the back for you. It tells you what it is in the front. I'll go over some basic details. The Vista 20P is called a Residio. If you go and talk to Honeywell, they know what Vista 20P is. They recently changed their name. Honeywell spun off all their intrusions. Residio now. It's R E S I D E O, Residio. Even though that is a commercial panel. It can be used in your home. The advantages of this panel. Um, the version. There's an IP version and a Pistol 20P. Okay? And the reason we use ton, it is Roby. You can use the radio, you can use Wi Fi, regular old phone, you can use. Uh, you know, uh, 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 by that fiber, fiber optic to communicate one up with the other, doesn't matter which one's primary or secondary, as far as communicating to the monitoring center. And the, they don't really, they, they, they send the signal, that, that signal, the dialer, the di digital dialer, this panel, and all other Honeywell panels does some things that a lot of other panels don't do. For instance, this panel will seize your, the, uh, if it's a regular phone line, for instance, it'll bring it dial out the center. It, the, it sends its signal to the monitoring center, not a voice, but the monitoring center. And then it holds the phone line, seizes it, and the dial tone so that the lady or the man on the other end can call back your residence or your business with it. Because a lot of thieves in the old days were able to pick up the phone, you know, or he'd have his buddy say, you know, two blocks away payphone long before they had cell phones and call this number and don't ring it inside and it goes because they have a business it goes you can't do that anymore. uses the phone line holds the phone line forces the dial tone sends its data monitoring center that says hey the system is armed it's in the away boat everything is the uh, the mud door or the door opened up should not nobody put it I'm waiting on code. Bang! Calls back. Nobody answers that. You know, Jones Trucking or Fifth Third Branch, so and so. They just dispatch right away. And what's nice about this panel and why we love the panel is it is two panels and two. It is a two partition panel. And I talked to. That's why I mentioned earlier. We do. What we do residential, we've increased our for two reasons, you know, and so many executives like you guys that are IT guys say, I can't take my work home until my boss says, I have, which I have to have, and I got to secure that office. And I said, we can do that. And they say, great, because I don't want your daughter, who I truly to disarm the man. In my office, I can't do it. I've got some new formula for time. I've got IT 
that thing I'm working on at work. You know, I've got terms about some studies we're working on at Fifth Third. And I want my office protected. With a two partition page, there's a key pad that can say your office in your house. The rest of it is your family. That you can lock us, go to work. They can come and go, do all kinds of stuff they want to do. Your system is only disarmed by whoever you've got authority to be in the house. And the building, for instance, do you have your hand up? Does that include employees that work for Department of Defense and military? Yes. Yeah, some regulations that we have to look at, especially if it's got anything to do with Homeland Security. They want, and some of them they have their own system, but in a lot of cases they don't care as long as we do redundancy. And use a skill and a hardwired hard -wired phone. The reason that they want a hardwired phone, which is the plain old telephone system, it's called POX. I'm sure you guys. Um, is because you can lose power and the phone stays on. And the radio stays on. Okay? And in some cases, depends on the agreement that you have and, and the level of security that you are with. You may have to. Okay. Say, Lenny, I just I gotta have it. You know, I just got a promotion and I'm working on this stuff. I'm, I've gotta be able to take things. Home. I've gotta make sure they're secure. Um, and we set it up at home and do everything they want to do at home. Or, it's separate from the other. We've just done so many of those where you can come in and the guys that work in the warehouse, come in, they get their trucks, they take them out, warm up, they need, you know, AE door and places like this. And at 6.30 in the morning, they're rolling. They're gone. They can't go in the office area at all. Those doors are locked. But they can go in the warehouse and turn it off and get everything going. By the same token, the warehouse, the office guy can't come in and go in and punch in some, you know, 35 growers. So we've got a lot of clients that, that have two partitions in one panel. Okay? And those two partitions are really good. Two about them is Connect app controls Connect is turn it on, turn it off, um, change how it's armed, turn on, temperature controls. Now all all corporate controls are not the same. You know, like we call them small enterprises, SMEs. Some of them have you know uh, control systems that are independent. They own their own building, they, they're not in a normal building or something like that. But this building, total for that would not be applicable for this building. There's air handlers, there's all different types of subsystems and everything else. Can I give it back to you? I'm gonna throw us off, I'm gonna keep going. Letter? Yeah. On the multi-part uh, controllers, as far as these dual partition or multi partition devices, can you give someone a control app that only gives them access to certain portions of the purchase? So they don't have total control, partial control. They can control the warehouse, but not the office. They can control all the maintenance app, but not the app. The air handler's app. That well, it, I'm just as an example. Yeah. Do they have this yeah, app I segregated to description? Yeah, it's going to see your blanket button, like, uh, uh, I think it's all the same on my tech. Look, it's too inconceivable. That's a good question. I'll just say on my tech, I think we can do that. Yeah. Back on your phone, you can be set up. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm asking. <laughs> but I'd have to talk. No, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm being very specific. A lot of devices, I can control. You know, if you if you want to go in the warehouse and you want to total connect, you can you can arm and disarm that warehouse. But I want my warehouse manager to have the total connect app on his phone, but only the warehouse. Can you call me tomorrow? <laughs> I, I I want to make sure. I I'll send an email to the email address. Okay, use the text. <laughs>
You see how I said no. all? Yeah. Please feel free to, to eat. I'll be happy to call if you would prefer no. no. I'll just call you back. <laughs> <laughs> I hate texting. I hate texting. <laughs> Either one. We'll be friends quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I just said call. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Darn it. Right question. I have the total connect on my phone. Um, you guys can open it up. Easiest thing to use. Total Connect 2.0. Uh, there is a another panel. I'm going to go ahead and get to this. We can go. There's a 128. Is a, a 128 B for burglary. I don't know why they still use that B for burglary. Okay. The eight partitions have been used a lot because we have we that are, you know, big, big label. It says, you know, I've got a two-story and uh, there's, you know, four businesses on top of each other and they're pretty darn big. And what I want to do is I want to put, I want to give every one of those, I want one of those, and I want one each one, and I want heat detectors in them, and I want one monitoring bill. And then when, when, what's your name? Tim. When Tim takes the his IT business, he can you know, worry about the security system. Yeah, I'll, you know, I'll just charge you, you know, 20 bucks. And then you come to say, well, let's talk about it. And you say, hey, I want code for my guys. Individualized codes. So we put in four digit codes in my team. And then I tell you to make the guys come up with their own codes. Don't ever assign codes. Right. And then we put in the duress code, and you should always have that. I was forced to do it. That code was 411. Well, that's the star code. But if your code happened to be 4112, because you never company would have a duress code, which could be right down the middle of your phone, 280. Let me give you an example. If that code ever went in, your siren wouldn't go off, your system would be turned off, but the police department would because you were forced to turn it off. Got me? Mm -hmm. Now maybe we would know that it's Tim's business, not the one above me, not the other. Okay, so the, the one is a four multiple zones, I mean multiple businesses, multiple partitions. So you have five. Okay, it's usually used a lot. It's it's also a big fire panel. So in, you know in this building where I mean okay so one the, the twin has. 49 user codes. That means 40, well one of them is the installer code you were talking about. 48 user codes instead of the user code. But you can imagine if you got two, two partitions people, warehouse, and 24 people that could be in the office. And then 48 zones, a lot of zones. It's got eight hardwired zones. So we could take wireless devices and hardwired. You can have more than eight hardware zones, you just gotta use zone doubling. But the hardware zone expanded. Mm -hmm. And we well he's referring to the panel is so robust that if you have a if you have a two what two motions in a warehouse, we could pull those on the same zone. Because sometimes you was front warehouse, back warehouse, all you want to know is warehouse. But with the zone expanded. Okay. So it is a very robust panel. That's just the 20. It's a big panel. It'll do just incredible things. And it really is, what's really nice is if you have a business and you want to put it in a panel and you want to protect the monitoring doesn't change. It doesn't double. You say, well, okay, you got two partitions, that's two panels. Yeah. I'm only tied into one radio, or I'm only tied into only one. Okay, so we've covered two. I want to talk to you about a couple of quick smoke detectors. <coughs> the wireless smoke in your brochure and your pad is a 58-3-W-5808-W3 uh, is a wireless smoke detector. Almost everybody uses it. We can put anywhere, especially in server rooms. We just did a server room where we put in heat smoke and a temperature uh says needed if you put the okay let's talk about the 5808 three dimensions 
It looks, it goes over 135 degrees. It looks for temperature that goes below. So you can't have frozen pipe, blood, and it looks for smoke. And then they photoelectric smoke Any smoke detector that you can buy at Lowe's, anywhere, they are not photoelectric. But really, I'll tell you quickly, they were developed to go into grain silos. They look for dust. That's what they were made for. There were so many explosions in the 60s, in grain silos through the spontaneous combustion that some brilliant guy of a dust detector sold thousands and thousands of them in silos. In code in silos. Heat. Yeah, that's not the same. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just say right because they're pipes. We have outdoor readers. We have um, there are guys that say, "Let me, you know, this is my, company, you know, and I want the ladies to be able to just hold people, and I want the guys to be able to walk by and walk and just stand next to the reader, click because they got their arm. You got me." Uh, we have people that say, I want to have because I want them going in departments and they we, we have to have special use and access control. Can be used for time and attendance. Yeah. And we bury those the cards that can be used for access control and time and attendance, for instance, at Dana Corporation, uh, which is uh, down in is the same as the card you see and your safety glasses fall out. Or your hard hat. You can buy your hard hat. Or you can be charged against your your uh, uh, your your check. You can use it for your lunch. They're, um, they have used the exact same card, proximity card, that that can be away from the reader, four inches, six inches. They're all different readers. Some readers are keypad, little little keypad with the reader. Some people forget. Uh, or they leave their, they, they change cars with their wife. And they got, oh my God, I got I'm hugging around my beer. And my wife got up and told me, I took your car. And I'm going, oh my God, what am I going to Well, you use your code. So there's, and, and there are readers who make readers that were that, that old no good. You know what I mean? But that won't fly. Um, you're, you're one of the... Does not have a thumb, you have to put in code or slide a card or it won't let you in. Yeah, it won't let you in. Yeah, I have two, 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 two credentials. It's pretty standard. And you know, it's hard to say because I would not want to be working for Duke Energy and be outside all day in my hands, freezing cold, and get in the building, and I got to hold on to the until my reader let me in. So we got to take into consideration all that kind of stuff. Some stuff sounds this the really practicalities. Yeah, right. The there's a there's a tumor reader that gets distributed. I mean, it's going to be four door panel. There's a, a two door panel. The four door panel we use is much as big as Sometimes they only have four or eight doors. You know, what I mean? buildings this big, one company. There's usually an employee entrance. There's usually a entrance to the lobby. Entrance to the lobby going. Um, to the garage, or some outdoor parking garage. There might be a side entrance to the other side of the parking lot. And then 
you know, there, there's that fourth one, you know, might be the IT room or the CEO's office. And sometimes that's the eight. Thank you, freedom of the night. Eight doors panel. Panel. And each one of the reader. We have a CEO that's, who said, I want to read it right outside my door. So when I come in in the morning, I can come in in the morning, I can present my card and walk in my office. But you know, letter, when people, when I can look through my glass door, the tail up to my door, I want my reader right next to my desk. So instead of somebody in my office, hold my card up or my thing around my neck up, like the door opens up and they can get in my office. Mm -hmm. um, on, on any of this equipment where you're sending data to a panel, is this data encrypted or not? Like the PIN numbers, the well, password? I, actually, it doesn't need to be encrypted because when you're reading a card, you're getting code off the card. And then that all is hidden in the wiring in, in the walls and things like that. And stuff you see in the movies about them pulling the thing off the wall and and doing that, that's not real. Yeah, but it's moving on the wire, so you're no. making clear text on the wire? The, the, has six conductor that's shielded. The cards have a number on the outside that are just a delineator for me knowing that card number 1609 was, but the number inside that here puts in a number, this wall, really wall type. And the IT department, A. There's really no intercept it because if you look at a card, uh, uh, let me see this. If this is a this is a car blown up, there is oh I would say probably a hundred feet up, less than it goes around and around it's an antenna, and at the bottom there's a chip, and that's what the reader reads is the chip card. They have melted things. They still need the antenna, and if they got to the antenna.